What's up, everybody? It's your favorite robotic bat's favorite nerd. And today, we are looking at the Batman Arkham Knight from Flame Toys. This is all known to me from Robert D. Of course, I love Batman. I love Flame Toys. I don't need robot Batman. I like robots when I like the characters. I like Batman a lot. I like ice cream. I like pizza. I don't necessarily need ice cream on my pizza. That being said, they make a pretty good product. I'm sure this will be no exception. Not sure if it's worth the price, though. We will talk about that in Final Thoughts. But before we do, let's talk about accessories. So he comes with a display stand, and I hate to get off on the wrong foot, but I kind of hate it. Uh, I'll talk you through it a bit. It's sculpted nice enough, and then you have these transparent pieces, these trans, uh, translucent plastics, and they're all pegged into the bottom here. Now, if you remove one of them, then you have this open passageway here. Then you have to take this, and in packaging, it actually comes with this on it. So... You remove this piece, then you slide this through there, and then you tab this, or you, you, you put it back into that slot there, and now you can move this back and forth. It's like the gimmick of it, but like it's too much. It's too complicated. It's too silly. It doesn't need to be this complicated. And now you have um, your display stand, which works well enough, I suppose. You have a hinge at the bottom, a secondary hinge, and a tertiary hinge. And then you have a swivel for your clamps, and I just pop one of those off, and then your clamps hold the figure. It's just, it's, it's overdone, and for it to be this overdone, it's not nice. So it's like worst of both worlds. He comes with a few extra hands. We have left and right holding hands, left and right trigger finger hands, left and right posing and supporting hands. And that's in addition to the two fist hands that we saw in the opening footage. They're all deco the same way, which is to say, you know, just the black kind of gloves and then the gunmetal silver on top. You get two handguns. And as you can see, they both clip on to this piece. This piece is actually the holster, so you could just set that aside and we'll look at one gun. So that is a gun metal, silver painted on with the black there, and it's sculpted nice enough, and it looks cool. And that's about all there is to say about it. He'll hold it just fine, and the holster bit pegs in right to this hole on his hip. And gives it a little, a pretty streamlined look, if you ask me. Lastly, he comes with his rifle, decoed once again the same way with the gun metal and then the black plastic, which actually might be a metallic here. I can't really tell. Uh, I, I was looking around to see like anything kind of extended or folded, you know, with, within reason, of course, and I can't necessarily find anything. It is a cool enough sculpt, but it is an awful lot of the same kind of color palette, and things do have a tendency to blend together on this figure. But be that as it may, he will hold it just fine. He comes with a knife, but the file got corrupted, so I'll show a picture of it here. It's decoed the same way with the metallic gun, the gunmetal silver, and it's a decent enough sculpt. Some black plastic on the hilt. And if you come around to the back of the figure, you can remove this piece and install this with those two tabs in its stead, and now you have him storing his knife. And he'll hold it in his holding hand as well. And let's talk about the figure. So... The head, I mean, like going through a Flames Toys figure is exhausting, right? Because there's just so much to talk about. But uh, did a piece fall off? No. Okay. Um, the head, it feels like it's on a single ball peg. You get up to there. You get down to there. You get the swivel. It's a little bit of a tight joint. And you get confused robot uh, face. Then you have the neck which is on his independent ball peg also. So using both in concert works like a double ball peg. That gets him all the way down. Doesn't really do a whole lot more for up, uh, but can get more to the side. Now let's talk about the deco. So we have a metallic blue. That you'll find here, 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 and here. Also there. You also have this metallic uh, like gunmetal silver. That's pretty much a staple throughout. Heavy on it. And then... You have the eyes, which are like a translucent blue. So that all works fairly well. All right. Whew. Moving on. Shoulders. You have these shoulder pads here. They will get up and out of the way a bit. Then you have the actual shoulder pads, which are on ball pegs connected to a single hinge. They will get up as well. Then you have the 
proper shoulder socket, which is on a hinge that allows for a butterfly joint out, nothing back. Then you have the disc hinge that the shoulder actually operates on. And that hinges forward too. So once again, a little bit of a tight joint, but using all of them in concert, you can get the arm above 90 degrees. Now where it plugs into the socket, you will get a swivel. So that'll get you 360. Where that connects to the bicep, you'll also get a swivel. This has the same kind of deco. However, we have a darker shade entering as well, a darker metallic uh, silver. All right, then the elbow. It's double hinged, and that gets you beyond 90 degrees, but not the full run. Then there's this piece on the back that doesn't really cover down on anything, but you do have it. And then you have the, the little gauntlet pieces here. They're silver, you have the blue different shades of the gunmetal. And then you have the wrist, which are on ball hinges. Um, and they swivel there at the peg, and then the ball hinge swivels at both sides so you can get up, down, in, and out. Same for the other side. Then, from the chest into the abdomen is a double ball peg, and from the abdomen into the pelvis, it feels like a single. Now, Lots of deco stuff going on, but let's get the articulation out of the way. Using both, you can get the figure almost completely bent over, so to speak. And a good bit back with the detailing still showing through. And no, I mean, there's a slightest bit of break in the sculpt, but I think it's minimal. You know, it's, it's easily forgivable. Now, you'll also get the swivel a little bit at the bottom joint, a lot of bit at the upper joint. And you get the teapot on both. Now, we introduce a new color here, this metallic red on the gut, as well as this white, which is beautiful. We, did get, uh, we didn't talk about it on the shoulder pads. So that all works well. Same for the back. Now, on the back itself, you have his like little canisters here and pouches. They're on a ball hinge as well. So they can get up and out of the way. And then each one of these connects, well, not each one, but the pouches connect to the cylinder and then into the ball peg. So, depending on what you want to do, you have a little bit of uh, freedom there to make a decision. They'll get all the way out of your way to manipulate the joints and then cover back down on them. So, moving on to the pelvis itself, we have this piece, which is a hard plastic, and we introduce a, maybe a little bit of the lighter silver. We might see it. No, there's a little bit there on the gut. Metallic red comes through as well. And then you have universals for hips. I don't want to push it to its limits, but you get pretty much a great range there, more than you would probably ever need. And great range forward and back, probably more than you would ever need. This piece will hinge out of the way as well to allow for more articulation. Um, and then just to like give you an idea, so you get his legs up like that, and then you can bring the pouches back and around. Uh, I do find that that can be a little bit see, and then you cover back down on the joint no problem so that all works really well now where they plug into the thighs you get a thigh swivel so no issues there then you get a double jointed knee and the joint is uh, decoed up no real new deco stuff just tons of sculpt work and the same sort of metallic paints we've been talking about and then you have the the knee pads uh, his actually came missing a knee pad uh, but he contacted them and, uh, and and wrote a crazy email that I'll talk about maybe on Patreon that he shouldn't have written. But they sent him one right away. They took care of him. Good customer service. And then we have the silver paint there, metallic blue paint there. And then we have the different shades of gunmetal on the boot, which all look great. And now we have the ankles, which are interesting. Thigh swivel, I mentioned that, right? I'm pretty sure I did. So the ankles are on an, uh, something I haven't, I don't think I've ever seen before, but it's like a... I guess it's basically a double ball peg, but the socket, it's a ball peg from the foot into the ankle and then from the calf into the ankle. And the ankle itself is like an L-shaped bracket that has two sockets on both sides. It looks good. They can put a little bit of extra sauce and detail on the back so it doesn't look like a joint. It kind of looks like part of the, the piece. And then it allows for a pretty uh, good-looking ankle tilt up and down. And then a pretty great rocker where it plugs into the socket. I've never seen this before, but it works really well. And then we have a toe tilt up as well. So, yeah, that's pretty nice. And there he is from the back. 
just want to make sure I mentioned everything because there's so oh, these bits here they hinge up but there's just all these little like bells and whistles that this thing can do and it's hard to kind of keep track of it all um, but most of the things that you see move however I'll also say it doesn't have the same kind of um, like interesting sort of joints that it usually has with the transformers where there's like pistons moving in and out of places like it's for them it's pretty basic but for uh, your your kind of average import figure it's pretty advanced size comparison wise there it is next to deadpool so it's obviously bigger than even a heroic 112 scale figure um and I'll, I'll be interested to see i'm going to put a couple more against it there it is with a McFarlane DC Toys Joker figure, so it's bigger than that as well, and that's whatever wonky goof scale that McFarlane's using, but it's obviously bigger than 112. Now, I don't think this necessarily works terrible because as a robot, it could be just bigger, right? You know, like intentionally made to be more imposing. And forgive my hand, but like I have her posed a particular way for a display and I don't want to alter it. So there, there he is with like the old school scale of Play Arts Kai, um figures which is smaller than their their scale now so it's smaller than that so it's just it's an odd size to be honest like i'm not it, it kind of is just going to fit independently on its own i imagine final thoughts wise for the negatives i actually have a fair amount to say i'll try to start with the objective but forgive me if they spill into one another there's a lot of fiddly bits on here and a lot of those fiddly bits for me have come undone much like duran duran for instance the little elbow bits here I've had those pop off on me a few times during the course of this review. I had a knee pad pop off. You also have to be careful with the knee pads because like, as you can see, this part of the knee pad here is sitting inside of the armor where it's supposed to remain on the outside of the armor to avoid damages and scratches. I also feel, so this is another thing, right? And this is kind of where the objective and subjective kind of tie together. So this is supposed to be Jason Todd spoilers from Arkham Knight, but it's kind of also like a robotic version of him, but kind of not a robotic version of him. And as a result, the color palette just doesn't pop like it doesn't seem to present itself in any real meaningful way because a lot of the colors just kind of blend into one another even looking at this pose it just starts to look like a general shape and yes it's kind of hard to figure out what's even going on on it now moving on to the build of the figure some of the joints are a little tight but i think for this it's okay because it seems like they're going to hold up and at no point did i feel like it was going to break i also think that the stand is overly complicated and kind of for no reason but just to say it's overly complicated i feel this way with a lot of display stands it's kind of like look what I can do and it's like yeah well can you just work easily how about you do a little bit of that and lastly it doesn't have like a light up feature which you know I don't necessarily need but if it doesn't have a light up feature I feel like the eyes should pop more and also I feel like it's a bit expensive it's $15 less than a hot toy and it doesn't display in the same way there's a lot of more perhaps engineering that goes into this and that's noted but it doesn't seem like it should be $215 it seems like a sweeter spot would be 125 to 150 and even that I probably wouldn't pay for it. It's so interesting that the stuff that they, with, they do with their Transformers, I'm like, yeah, 400 seems about right for this. But I think being able to compare this with other imports, whether it be Play Arts Kai or SH Figuarts, which aren't on the same level of this engineering wise, admittedly. However, it doesn't seem to be $160 away. In fact, this kind of seems like it should sit around that price point, not be that much more than a, than a other kind of 112 scale import. So yeah, it's a mixed bag in that regard for me. Positives wise, I don't want you to feel like there's not a lot to talk about here because there is. There's the typical Flame Toys fanfare that comes with everything they do and this one's no exception. The materials feel great. The build feels great for the most part. The paint is beautiful. It's metallic paint from top to bottom. And where it's not metallic paint, it's that crisp white paint that looks absolutely beautiful and does help the figure pop. And the engineering here is pretty impressive. The articulation, the little bells and whistles, a lot of stuff moves that you wouldn't necessarily think to move. All of the belt bits and the knee bits and the elbow bits and what else was there? There's like little wrist. It's like everywhere you look. Well, God, this stand is trash with a capital T. And I don't even know if they make the stand because the stand had its own kind of instructions. It's the X board. Bam, bam, bam. Trash. Exit out of here. You know what I mean? Send, send the X board to the exit. Ah, stop it. Anyway, little hinges there at the shoulders and stuff like just so much of this stuff moves in order for you to kind of get cool poses and striking poses and all that and all of that works great per usual typical flame toys goodness. It's all in there. I'm just not sure if it's enough at the end of the day for this one, but it might be for one we're looking at here soon. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Take care.